periodic table of elements. The table that displays the chemical elements in a special order in different columns and rows. You may have seen it on a cover of a book, one of these maybe, or not, or a wall of place like your university or even your high school. The pattern that this table is presenting is based on several properties of elements. Today in this video, I wanna discuss with you how and by whom this table was discovered. This is the story of periodic table. Hello everyone, my name is Majid and welcome to Topics Basics. Here in this channel, as one of the main topics, I cover scientific stories, stories of scientists, discoveries and inventions. For the first one, I chose story of periodic table. As it is very interesting to me and much related to my background and current work as a material chemist. So if you're interested in these stories, make sure to follow us. Okay, periodic table. Centuries ago, scientists were working hard on elemental discoveries. Several others were trying to find patterns and regulations between the discovered elements. It looks pretty hard to have a bunch of elements and know some of their properties and then come up with a table that includes all of them, all of the discovered elements. Hmm, wait, wait, wait here. If you mean a table that regulates the elements in a way that their properties have periodic function, yeah, yeah. He's right. It took several years and many scientists contributed to the discovery of the table. But among all of the discoveries in gradual development of periodic table, let's focus on three major breakthrough discoveries. First, the report by Johann Wolfgang Dobrainer, the German scientist who were chemistry professor at the University of Jena. He published his Law of Triads in 1829 where he basically put three elements in one family in the order of increasing atomic weight. But let's have a short break on atomic weight here. Atomic weight is fundamental in many developments in chemistry, including this one. It is basically the mean relative atomic mass, where atomic mass is the sum of number of protons and neutrons of a specific atom. It has been supposed by Dalton in the beginning of the same century that all of the atoms of a specific element have the same atomic mass, but it has been changed after the discovery of isotopes. But for now, let's stick to atomic weight and continue the discussion. So, Dobrainer made families of three elements in the order of increasing atomic weight, and his law was that the average atomic weight of the first element and the third one would be the atomic weight of the middle one. For instance, he made triads of lithium, sodium, potassium, sulfur, selenium, tellurium, calcium, strontium, barium. As you can see in each of his triads, if you sum the atomic weight of the first element and the third one and divide it by two, you end up with the atomic weight of the middle one. This was great discovery at the time and the first arrangement of the elements that relate to the periodicity in the property of the elements, and also pinpointed atomic weight as the central property. But the problem was that it could not cover all of the discovered elements. It was just valid for some of them, not all of them. The second one which I want to mention is the discovery that came up more than three decades later. In 1865, John Newland, the British chemist, rank the elements in the order of increasing atomic weight. But more importantly, he noticed that elements with similar property occurred every eight elements. In other words, in his list that the elements are ranked in the order of increasing atomic weight, he saw elements with similar property after each eight elements. He named this patent as the law of Oktov, that can be the origin of groups in the periodic table. But the problem was that it was not valid for the elements that had atomic weight higher than calcium. It could not also accommodate some of the future elements, for example, noble gases. After these two major breakthrough discoveries toward classification of elements, let's discuss about the man himself, Dmitry Mendeleev. 
a Russian chemist who is known as the father of periodic table. He grew up in Siberia in very poor family. His teacher father couldn't work due to illness and his mother was forced to work to support the family. After several circumstances, Dmitry, his mother and sister, moved to St. Petersburg, where he started his university studies in 1850. Six years later, he successfully finished his master's degree, where he reported on the relationship between the specific volume of substances and their crystallographic and chemical properties. After several years working in St. Petersburg University, he got funded to go to Germany. During his time at Heidelberg University, he attended the first chemistry conference in Karlsruhe, where atomic weight was one of the central topics. Several scientists discussed that, including Kanizaro. He came back after two years to St. Petersburg and continued working there. When he was appointed to teach in organic chemistry, he started to write down his course material that was continued for many years because of his interest in the field. This led to his famous book titled as Foundations of Chemistry. And in 1869, his major breakthrough discovery was delivered. At this time, he has extensive knowledge of elements because of a couple of reasons. His educational background, his time in Germany and learning about the importance of atomic weights, all of the years that he spent write his book and learning about chemistry, and more importantly, his engraving desire to find the relationship between the elements and solve the periodicity. He had very interesting strategy for discovery of the table. So he made small cards and on each of them wrote one element with their property, something like a flashcard, like, like a memo card that my son is playing with. You may have seen it. Let's say this is one element and this is the property of it. And he made a bunch of it. Start playing with them. It took lots of time and patience. The other aspect of him was his industrial tool. One day that he was traveling by train to work on his cheese making technique, he had lots of time. So he started playing with his flashcards. He started arranging elements in the order of increasing atomic weight and when a new element with similar property popped up, he was starting a new row. This means in each horizontal row, he had elements in the order of increasing atomic weight, and in each vertical group, he had elements with similar properties. And boom, that was it. In March 1869, he sorted all of the 63 known elements at a time. A couple of days later, copies of his table were sent to his colleagues in Russia and all around Europe. There are a couple of points to consider here to realize his model was outstanding compared to the other two. The first one, his periodicity model required changes in the atomic weight of some of the well-known elements. The other one is that he left empty places for the unknown elements. This means that he brilliantly, almost correctly, predicted the property of the unknown elements. The scientific background that I just talked about gave him confidence to argue his model, but it was very difficult for him to convince other scientists. Luckily for him, during his lifetime, three of those elements that he predicted were discovered by his European colleagues. And after that, Mendeleev periodicity was most welcome. In 1882, Mendeleev was awarded Davy Medal by Royal Society. John Newland also claimed to be recognized for his contribution, and he got the same prize in 1887, one year after the discovery of germanium, which he also predicted before Mendeleev. In 1906, Mendeleev was nominated for Nobel Prize for the discovery of periodic table, but he was ruled out at the last stage. The decision was explained that his discovery is not recent enough, but rumor says that it was originated from the influence of Suanto Arrhenius, Swedish scientist who clashed with Mendeleev in the past. Years later, courtesy of Mendeleev, Elsevier, one of the main publishers of scientific papers, has one journal connected to his name as Mendeleev Communication, 
the author of periodic law and periodic system of chemical elements. Nowadays, modern periodic table consists of 118 elements in 18 groups and 7 periods. On the left, the first and second groups are alkali metals and alkali earth metals. On the right side, halogen and noble gases. Transition metal, metalloids and inner transition metals are well organized. Now we know that the same property of the elements in one group that was discussed by Newlands and Mendeleev is originated from the same number of valence electrons. In our chemistry books, several periodic trends are discussed that help us understand chemistry and chemical reactions better. These trends are related to the atomic and physical property of the elements. For instance, the atomic radius that increases down the group and decreases along the period or the ionization energy, the energy to take the electron from an element, which decreases going down the group and increases by going from left to the right in the period. This was the story of periodic table. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.